everyone. I'm back. Okay, so this page turns out to be one of my favorite pages I think I've ever made. And as you can see, I'm still working in this piece of uh, mail that I got. It's a Shutterfly ad, and um, I'm just gessoing the pages. The pages are glossy. I'm going to adjust my mic, so pardon the noise. There we go. Alright, uh, so the pages are glossy, so I'm just using some Liquitex Basics Gesso. And sorry for the drying footage. Apparently that didn't get removed. So um, I just put it on very sketchy. I know that I'm going to usually end up adding so many layers that I don't worry about it. So I recently made a trip to Phoenix, and of course while I was there, because Vegas doesn't have an Ikea, I had to go to Ikea in Phoenix, or Mesa to be more accurate. So while I was there, uh, they had the paper measuring tapes, and I was like, oh my god. So I went with my family, and there were a whole bunch of us, so I made everyone save all their um, paper measuring tapes. So, And of course I found some here and there, and you know, so... Um, yes, yeah, so this ends up being my background. So I'm using Liquitex uh, Matte Gel Medium, and I'm just gluing down the paper tape. One side has inches, one side has uh, centimeters. So I'm just going, I'm alternating every other row is, is a, uh, different. So one side centimeters, one side inches, or one row. So then I just add a little bit of glazing fluid, and this is uh, golden manganese blue fluid acrylic and I just wanted a, a, a light wash so that's why I added the uh, glazing fluid to thin it out a bit the uh, liquid acrylics uh, fluid acrylics excuse me are um, a little bit more uh, they're a lot more transparent than than normal colors most of the colors are so uh, yeah, you're going to get a different effect with these. So, And then I pounced some of the color up with my uh, rag and then sprayed with water and uh, blotted up with paper towel. You get this really cool distressing kind of look with it. So, And I was squeezing real slow on my spray bottle, so I got big chunky blobs of water. So a little bit more glazing fluid, and I want to say this is uh, Liquitex... Basics, bright aqua green, I think. Don't quote me. But I'm pretty sure it's that color. So um, it, it looks more green, like seafoam green, than it really is. Um, it's more a tealish, turquoisey, more turquoisey, kind of tealy color. Yeah, one of the two. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, I just did uh, another layer on top and then blotted some of it up. I wanted there to be some depth and a couple different colors. So yeah, blotting. Think like lipstick. You just want like the top layer to come up. So I'm sorry I missed the first part of this footage. I'm just scraping on, uh, what color is that? Something, uh, quinacridone magenta and it's an Amsterdam orange paint. Hazo orange. And I'm just scraping the two on with my palette knife. Decided I want a little bit more orange. I want to say I added a little bit of purple in there because it, it's looking purple. I want to say there was a purple color I added. I'm not sure what color it is. I'm sorry about that. I was having technical difficulties. So I drew some black lines, if you can see, um, up and down the sides of this page, and that was in a water soluble pencil wasn't sure what I was doing, I just felt like drawing. So uh, then I want to say this is cadmium yellow, and most of this goes away. You'll see what I mean by most of this. So I am just, you know, going up and down on the page. And I said, oh, I hate this. Spray it down with water. So what ends up happening is that the paint almost turns into a slight wash. It turns that blue a slightly greener color. Um, it just shifts the colors just ever so slightly. So because it's shifted on the left, you can see it's a little bit greener. I wanted to do the same thing on the right page, so I added a little bit more yellow, washed it down, then wiped it away. So there's that page. 
Okay, so at this point I was stuck. I posted on Instagram um, a shot of the, the page, and um, I said, help, what do I do with this? And a couple of my uh, Instagram followers said, draw on it. And I was like, I'm trying, and it's just not working. And so I said, okay, I, whenever I get stuck, what I do is I add layers on top. Because if you get stuck with something, that means it's not done. At least in my head, that's how it works. If I get stuck with something, cover it up. Not necessarily all of it. Like with this, I'm just covering up just a tiny bit. So I'm just using book text and matte medium. And I am going in and just adding some random torn strips of book text. As you can see, I made it look like it was continuous across the page with a couple different pieces of uh, book text. You're not going to really see in the crevice of the, the book, so it's not a huge deal if the you know, words don't line up, if the paragraphs don't line up. It's really more a design feature. So, yeah. So just gluing this down. That's all I'm doing. And the matte medium um, seals the paper in, so it makes it nice and um, sealed. Non-porous, that's what I'm looking for. Non-porous, so you can uh, do lots of playing with, with it and um, the texturizing. You have to be careful because obviously water-soluble stuff on top won't really work. It will, but, you know, it'll come up really easily, so you'll have to seal it somehow. So this is a pot holder I got from Walmart and also one of my favorite stamps. <laughs> um, and I'm just using some archival ink in uh, jet black. And I just went around and stamped very randomly. And I'm using my pit big brush markers. And this is, I don't know, some pink color. And um, I was trying to do some shading, some not typical shading. So I tried a couple different colors. As you can see, there's a little bit of blue up in that corner I just touched. And um, yeah, it just wasn't working. I was like, what in the world am I going to do? So I was like, you know what? I've already started. Just go with black. So I started doing some shading in black. So that's what I'm going to keep doing for a while. You're welcome. On all of these. That's what's happening. I'm telling you, though, this page turns out to be one of my favorites. I think possibly the favorite, if not my favorite, the one I'm the most proud of. Because, yeah, I, like, drew on this one. I drew and painted. If you've ever seen my video response, uh, there was a, a tag that I did. And, um, like, a YouTube tag where people will tag you and ask you questions. And it's... Uh, it's on my channel. It's called VR Getting to Know You. If you've never seen it, you'll get to know a lot about me uh, by watching that video. And um, in that video, I said I want to learn how to paint for real, not just scrape paint on a paper, which ironically I did scrape, literally scrape paint on paper on this. I also wanted to learn to paint. So I've been watching some videos um, on YouTube. And uh, the name of the channel is Will Kemp, W-I-L-L, -L, Kemp, K-E-M-P, Art School. He's a British guy, and he is fantastic. He shares his knowledge for free, and he does some brilliant shading, and uh, really teaches you about color mixing, so it's great. Um, so I highly suggest you check him out. This is, uh, again, my Pitt Artist Big Brush markers, and because this paper is now non-porous because of the matte medium, I can go right over the top and blend this color right into the, essentially on top of the uh, matte medium. So I just didn't want that paper sticking out so much. And apparently right here on this page, see that big blotch right there? Apparently that didn't get sealed very well because it soaked right in. So, eh. Oh well, it is what it is. So I found this picture on the internet. It's just a picture of calla lilies. Um, they're my wife's favorite flower, and I love them. Um, we, we we really love 
stargazer lilies, but we also like calla lilies, both of us. So um, I was like, you know what, I want to try drawing something. This is fairly simple in form. The shading's a little bit difficult because of the, you can see the kind of folds in the flower in the top left of that left flower. I'm only drawing the left flower. Um, so I was like, oh, we'll give it a give it a shot. So I'm using a Uniball Signo pencil. And the reason I use this pencil is because it's water soluble. So I knew that the paint would react to it. So essentially what it does is it gives me an automatic shading on the edge um, once I paint over it. And the nice thing is when I mess up, you don't have to erase it. You don't have to worry about rubbing the paper raw. Uh, you can just spray it down with a little bit of water, use paper towel, and it will go right away. So, uh, it's like erasing, but with water, and you don't have to worry about messing up your background as long as everything's been sealed. So now I'm just getting some paint out. I have some titanium white, some unbleached titanium, which is that cream color, raw umber, which is the dark brownish color. And um, I'm starting with these colors, and I want to say that bottom greenish color that I'm dipping into is, yeah, it's a golden fluid acrylic, and it is sap green. So I'm just mixing uh, with the sap green a little bit of the titanium white, and I'm just starting to lay down some of my base color. I'm not worrying too much about the final shading. I'm just trying to get in some of the dark colors and trying to get it uh, get it shaded for now. Now, as you can see in the, the picture, it's not really green all the way up to the base of the flower. So I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking and shading. I used a little bit of artistic license. It's not perfectly shaded the way it should be. Um, but it ends up working out. So uh, right now I'm using a little bit of titanium white and raw umber. When you use raw umber, it's very, very saturated, the color. And I want to say this is an artist loft, the uh, raw umber. So even a cheap student grade acrylic is very saturated. The color is saturated. So when you mix it, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of raw umber goes a long, long way. So I squeezed out very, very little, and I end up using very little of it. But the uh, the titanium white I end up using a good portion of. So then I just started painting. Um, the reason I didn't use gesso is because gesso is not as opaque, meaning it wouldn't cover up as much. Um, I always get opaque and translucent. I have to think of translucent as transparent. Um, it's not really transparent, but you can kind of see through it. So I wanted more transparent color, uh, translucent, or excuse me, opaque color. So I went in with the titanium white and laid down a base coat. As you can see, some of the green mixed into my color. I, I'm okay with that. Um, there are imper imperfections in flowers. Um, you, you know, you're going to see some of the natural shading and colors pop through in different areas. So I was completely good with that. So as you can see, I'm just going through, and I'm using a very small filbert brush, and I'm just uh, filling everything in. I use this brush and a spotter, which is tiny, tiny, tiny paintbrush. I have very big hands, so um, <laughs> well, they're not very big, but they're you know, meaty. So um, I had to use the spotter for very tight areas. So I was trying to use this filbert for the highlight right here that I'm trying to shade or um, add in. And uh, it was getting too big because I was applying too much pressure. So um, I'm also trying to work on figuring out what brushes I need to use when. Um, I, again, I'm I'm still learning. So know that I'm sharing this with you as part of my journey and, uh, and I'm very very happy with the steps I took during this uh, this particular journey so uh, yeah uh, this is a little bit more of the raw umber and the titanium and I'm just doing some shading behind the uh, stamen which I still haven't filled in and uh, doing some of those 
crevices, as you can see, the, kind of the folds. And again, I was I was going for some realism. So I, you know, in the past I've done some painting and shading, and I was not going for realism. And oh my God, that's a real flower! I think I've even said that in a video before. And um, in this one, I was I was going for I mean. Obviously, it's a painting of a flower, but I was going for, wow, that's that's a flower. So, and in the past, I've used, you know, magazine uh, pictures and uh, painted over the top of them, which is a an awesome way to go. Um, but I really wanted to to take a stab at at drawing. I've I've taken some basic art classes, and um, so I know some of the basics of of drawing. So I just wanted to, um, you know, like I said, give it a shot. So I'm using that spotter, which is a tiny, tiny little brush, and it's a Simply Simmons, and I the bristles are maybe a quarter of an inch long, if that, thinking maybe even eighth of an inch, about a quarter of an inch, I'd say. So I'm adding some bleached titanium, some of the titanium white and some of the raw umber. I'm just adding some different shadows, some different colors. Uh, they're all within the same, you know, four colors, I believe, are what I'm using, but to get these different tones. Um, and, you know, the, the channel I was talking about earlier, the Will Kemp Art School, he, um, he teaches you about you know, acrylic mixing acrylic and uh, shading and tones and some of this like I said I've learned in art in uh, college classes um, in art class um, but most of it I learned from him you know some of the basic uh, drawing I learned in art art class so but it's it's really helped me um, you know, because we did black and white, and when you work in black and white is when you can really see the tones, um, so the, the light and the dark. So if you ever have a hard time seeing, if your eyes don't see the different shades and the different colors, try printing your image in black and white. Then usually you can see where the dark areas are, where the light areas are, um, how it needs to fade in and out. Um, so that, that usually helps if you're having a hard time, you know, shading and finding everything. So, I'm just doing some more painting, lots and lots of painting here. I only use one additional color aside from titanium white, unbleached titanium, raw umber, and sap green. And that additional color is azo orange, which is the exact same orange that's on the underpainting. Um, which I scraped on with the palette knife on top of the IKEA rulers. And uh, that was a little bit more sap green. I ran out. Um, by the way, you usually need less acrylic than you think. Um, but I was using golden, and I'm, I'm very, very cheap when it comes to my golden acrylic paints because they're kind of pricey so I use even less than I think I need and so I usually have to go back for more so anyway by the way if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram you'll know that right now um, my son and I are currently obsessed with the movie Frozen if any of you have kids you will know exactly what I'm talking about and you will also love it as well. And if you haven't seen it, you really should. Even if you're not a uh, big fan of kid movies, I'm normally not crazy about kid movies, but oh, I love that movie. It's so good. Kristen Bell is fantastic. Adina Menzel, oh, love her. So I posted a picture of me on um, on Instagram <laughs> singing, and um, I said, "What? What?" Um, what song am I currently singing? And one of the girls who follows me on Facebook, her name is Ashley. She cracks me up. She's a riot. Um, she she posted, let's see, probably the song that every other parent with kids or every other person with kids is currently singing, Let It Go by Frozen. And I thought it was hysterical because that was the very first comment that I got. And it was spot on. I was, I was yeah, in hysterics. So...
As you can see, I am filling in the stamen now with a little bit of titanium white uh, because the area behind the stamen has now been shaded. That titanium white pops. And I wanted a base color for that orange. This orange is uh, Amsterdam Acrylics, and it's a student grade, and it's very, very translucent. So I had to do multiple layers to get it to the brightness I wanted, and I'm, I skipped some of that out because you didn't need me need to see me painting the same orange stamen over and over. Uh, but then to do a little bit of the shading on the left, I added just a touch of raw umber to the orange just to darken it up, and now you can see it, it looks slightly more three-dimensional. So, again, I'm just going through adding some highlights. And for the highlights, I'm just using that spotter brush and my uh, titanium white. All this was done in acrylic, and I think I only used my heat tool once. Um, I like I liked blending on top of the wet paint. It helps it blend better. So I am just using some stamps and those, I don't even know what brand they are. I'm sorry. Um, but they, they weren't very sticky. They're an older brand. So um, I use, I have this giant Inka Dinka Doo block right there and I covered it with a Lean's Tacket over and over and I found that at Michael's. Everyone said they have a hard time finding it, but it's available at my Michael's, so I'm not sure. Um, I know you can find it on Amazon, um, and it it's sticky, so instead of having to paint the glue on the back of every single letter that isn't sticky, or every single stamp, I just painted it right to the block. And uh, that way, any stamp you stick on it is much more sticky, or stickier, whichever one. So, that's a really good tip. You know, get an extra block and um, smear some... Aline's tack it over and over on it, and it will be super sticky. So, I use this. Oh, there's my white wine. <laughs> I was painting. Jen's judging me. I was painting. It helped me to, to paint. So, this is a Stabilo pen, and I want to say it's called Pen 68. It's a water-based pen. It's kind of like the pencil that I use to draw the flower. I'm pulling it out, so excuse the noise. Uh, yeah, Pen 68, water-based pen. It's a, kind of a marker, um, but I also have the pen version, and they're cheap. They're so cheap. They're less than a buck, maybe maybe right around a dollar. And I'm just using that to paint in all of the letters. Uh, because they didn't stamp too well because of the uh, rulers, the paper rulers in the background that gave it some texture. So I filled that all in to make it even darker. Now I'm using a Uniball White Signo pen. And I'm just going right on the left of the letters. Just wanted to add like a white drop shadow just to help those letters pop but I didn't want to outline the whole letter. That's my favorite white pen, by the way. I have quite a few. If you're a mixed media artist, you'll know that you've been through quite a few white pens. And I have to tell you, this is my, my favorite. I don't like the Sharpies. Um, the um, There's a, an Elmer's one. Uh, what's it called? I see it. It's in that thing. Oh, well, it's right here. Here, let me tell you. Let's see. Is that Elmer's one? Oh, the painter's pen. That's available at Walmart. Yeah, it's okay. It's not that opaque. So, and the Sharpie ones I hate. I threw them away. So... Yeah, that's pretty much the only white pen I have left. Oh, that and the Jelly Roll. I do have the Jelly Roll. It's just not as uh, opaque as this pen is. So I have a funny story for you. So tonight, um, I got home from work, and Jen had dinner made, and 
she um, had wine poured, which I was happy about. So I finished my wine, and she's like, let's go to Dairy Queen. It's like 8 o'clock at night, 8.30. So we went to Dairy Queen, and they were completely out of peanut butter. And she and I both wanted something with peanut butter. We were talking about peanut butter. We're like, we want peanut butter, but ice cream in it. So we show up at Dairy Queen, and they're out of peanut butter. For real. So both of us didn't get what we wanted. So we had to get... Um, Ice cream cones, butterscotch dipped cones. Our house is slightly too far away from Dairy Queen to do that. So we had ice cream all over us. So I sent a picture to Packer Dye. Um, she's a friend of mine. And I said, look at this. Our house is way too far from Dairy Queen. I had a diagonal line on my shirt from where the ice cream melted on the seatbelt. So, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> this is my uh, my uh, pit, Faber-Castell pit big brush marker in black. And I'm just shading the edges of the page just to frame in the whole um, piece. And because it's sealed, I'm able to uh, rub it on and then smear it out. So it gives it a... Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, if you know me, you'll know why I'm laughing right now. Um, so, it, <laughs> could you hear my wife? Yeah, she knows why I'm laughing. So, um, yeah, it gives it a really good framed in uh, appearance. So, that's my page. I'm really proud of it, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but in the bottom left-hand side, I even signed it because I felt like this is really one of my first pieces of real art. So, there you go. Art. Talk to you later. Bye.